Happy Friday, everyone. What's going on? Welcome to Fantasy Football Today. I'm in a raise the roof kind of mood. Very happy for the weekend to be here. And we could watch some what some good football this weekend. You sound like a man that did a taste test with two candy bars. I did do a taste test with two candy bars last night. Could not tell them apart. They are the same candy bar. Both are delicious. Um, Adam, I will I, not say this on the air. Dave, gonna, Dave you you I didn't name the candy bars. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say We're not it. Gonna, we can't name the candy bars, but it was just funny how Adam brought it up. <laughs> they were, they are. And the now same. he's starting the show like he's on like a quasi sugar high. Yeah, a lot of a lot of sugar um, this week. So we got six games to talk about today uh, to preview today. Seattle at Arizona, the rematch. Green Bay at Detroit. Rams at Tampa Bay. Miami at Chicago. Minnesota at Washington. The Kirk Cousins revenge game. Baltimore. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Taylor Heineke revenge game, too. Oh, OK. My, my first bad. Team was the Vikings. Thank Couldn't you. Could it also be a Kevin O'Connell revenge game? Could be. He was on the coaching staff of Washington once upon a time. A lot, a lot of moving parts here. Going to be a brawl in that game. And Baltimore at New Orleans. Uh, just sure of, of some of my... These are a few of my favorite stats for today's games. Matthew Stafford and Tom Brady are 27th and 29th, respectively, in touchdown rate among qualified quarterbacks. In 2021, Oof. they were second and sixth, respectively. It's funny, Dave. We talk about Tom Brady. He's not throwing a lot of touchdowns, not throwing a lot of touchdowns. Because they say the same exact thing about Matthew Stafford. But for some reason, we're a lot more optimistic about Brady. I mean, not for, for, for obvious reasons, I think we're a lot more optimistic about Brady. I think we are because we, we give him a pass because we like his receiving core. We know he hasn't been pressured like crazy, certainly not like Matthew Stafford has. And so we're hoping that he can rectify it. We all witnessed the drop touchdown two weeks ago. I've referenced the Kate Otten touchdown called back this week when talking about Brady as a start. I'm I'm still willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's a top 12 quarterback for me this week. All right. And, you know, for Stafford, he has a career low 2.7% touchdown rate. He has the third most green zone pass attempts and only five touchdowns in the green zone. And he's got a 23% completion rate on end zone targets. That is a career low. It is down from 41.8% last year. So both guys struggling in that category. Kirk Cousins has not had a game with three touchdown passes yet this season. That I is think. the longest stretch of his career, Jamie. He's never gone seven games without a three touchdown pass. Kevin O'Connell has ruined him. Uh, he's He is the new Matt Ryan. He throws shorter than any quarterback in uh, in football. Nothing downfield. So, hey, made this Kevin O'Connell ruin it? Kevin O'Connell ruining him? <laughs> yeah, they're six and one. How dare he? <laughs> they're paper tigers. Um, no, but I actually think it's interesting that he's actually been pretty solid for fantasy, and they have not mm -hmm. unlocked the, the downfield uh, aspect of the game. Kirk Cousins is QB, about QB 12 per game. Yeah. Isn't he like right around 20 points per game? Uh, Maybe a little more? Six point. He is it at 19.9. Yep. Yeah. Uh, could this be a game where they do throw downfield a little bit more just because that commander's pass defense is nowhere near as good as their run defense? I uh, hope so. And my last favorite stat for today, in seven career games against Arizona, DK Metcalf has never had a 60-yard game, and he has just one touchdown. You guys have him in the top 15. Come on! DK Metcalf. Come on. <laughs> All right. Fine. We'll talk about it later. I think on a bye, man. Come on. Come on. All right. Where should we have him? Should we have him behind Michael Pittman? Should we have him behind Romeo Dobbs? How, no. how far down should we go with? Oh, is, are you ranking Lazard? No. no. He. I think Lazard should go over him. Yeah. Uh, he should go behind Tyler Boyd, wherever Tyler Boyd is. Nice. Nice. Bold call. Boyd where prohibited. All right, we'll talk about DK Metcalf in a little bit. Let's spend no more than five minutes on the bad Philadelphia-Houston game last night. There was actually a great Philadelphia-Houston game last night with the Astros winning uh, game five of the World Those Series. Those two defensive plays at the end were fantastic. Uh, which ones? Oh, the, oh, the catch. Came in first base and uh, Chaz, whatever his name is. McCormick, I think. Is that it? McCormick, yeah, in center field. He's Ooh, a Philly kid, too. Uh, yeah, that was a tremendous catch. Um, all right, Philadelphia 29, Houston 17. Guys, I'm going to come up with a new term here. 
panic or purchase? Uh, <laughs> JK stole that from HQ on Devonte Smith. Jamie, uh, buy low, sit. What do you do on Devonte Smith now? What do you have? Twenty yards, twenty-two yards last night, and that's forty-four or fewer yards in four of his last five games. I would buy low uh, because you're probably getting dirt cheap. There's still a lot to like about what his role is in this offense, and you know, I mean, imagine if something happens to AJ Brown or Dallas Goddard, and then you're looking at you know just more targets headed his direct his his direction. So. You know, just because you trade for him, depending on what you go, you don't have to start him week in, week out. Uh, I would I would like to hope that you can, but he'll he'll now fall from the uh, number two receiver range to the number three receiver range until he fights his way out of it, especially with uh, the teams, you know, the players coming back. But I would like to have him on my team if I can. OK, Dave, any takeaways on your end here? I noticed that Dallas Goddard owned earned earned owned the fourth quarter and it, it was the second time this year when Philadelphia was in a close game, and I thought that this was a close game until Goddard scored, that Hurts leaned on him. Remember the game against Arizona? He had a pretty good second half there, and then he had a huge fourth quarter today or yesterday. What day is it? Uh, I, I think Goddard, when we see a matchup coming where we think Philadelphia is going to have a close game, I mean, he's a must-start either way, but you can feel a lot better about him in those close games because I think Hurts is going to lean on him there. Damian Pierce or Miles Sanders rest of season. It was odd that Pierce did not have any targets in this game. He had been pretty involved in the passing game, but Miles Sanders also did not have any catches in this game, and he rarely uh, – he's had two straight games without a catch. Um, Miles Sanders – Damian, surprising. Yeah, but you know, in his first six games, he had at least one catch. He had, in every game, he had two or three catches in four games. But anyway, uh, Miles Sanders or Damian Pierce rest of season. I give a slight lean to Pierce, but that's it's close. You know, I mean, they're they're you, you can you can give positives and negatives on, on each one. You know, Pierce is going to continue to dominate work, but his his offense is bad. But he's clearly the focal point. Whereas Sanders, his offense is going to score a lot more time, lot, give, put up a lot, a lot more opportunities to score. So those scoring chances should be there for him. But you know what Jalen Hurts does. The, I didn't like the fact that there was the the last time he got them down to the I think it was the Goddard touchdown. We got them down there, and then he came off the field, and, and Boston Scott was on there. Um, so I, I'll, I'll take Pierce, but it's close. Yeah, and remember, Gainwell scored a short yardage touchdown too. So he he doesn't not he's not the exclusive running back in those situations. And um, Pierce was great, but if you played against him, you're probably breathing a sigh of relief. Thirteen point nine PPR fantasy points on a uh, was that what it was? Sorry, yes. yeah, yeah. Well, he didn't have any catches, and he had 139 rush right. yards. He didn't score. Sure. Just want to make sure 139 didn't throw um, any passes. Yeah, so he he was terrific, but in re- IRL in fantasy, you know, he's probably going to be an RB two. All right, I think that's it for that game, right? We good? I don't yep. want to trust any Texans receivers. Brandon Cooks should be back next week. Would you guys rather have Brandon Cooks or Nico Collins rest of season? I don't want to trust any Texans receivers. Uh, probably still Cooks. You know, I would, I would hope that, okay, you're disgruntled. You got mad. They didn't trade you. Fine. Now it's over. You can't do anything about it. Go out and play. Yeah, hope so. Yeah. Go out and get those 11 PPR points, Brandon. Woo. <laughs> we got a lot of great content coming at you this weekend. Follow us on Twitter. Dave is at Dave Richard. Why aren't our Twitter handles displaying today? Is that because there's a graphic up? Is that what happens? What if we get rid of the lower third? Do the Twitter handles come back? We'll find Who cares? Out. Who uh, oh, where are they? What happened to the Twitter handles? Anyway, uh, Dave is at Dave Richard. Jamie is at Jamie. There they are. At Jamie Eisenberg. E-I-S-E-N-B-E-R-G. Oh, J-M- J-A-M-E-Y is uh, is the tricky part. And then there's three minutes that we'll never get back. At Adam Azer, A-I-Z-E-R. Follow Heath at Heath Cummings, S-R. Uh, Dan, Chris, follow everyone. And tweet us with the hashtag AskFFT. It's a good way to get your question answered throughout the weekend. We also have CBS Sports HQ, 10 a.m. Eastern on Sunday morning, right up until kickoff. Gambling advice, fantasy advice, good fun times had by all, insider information. And we have a live stream on YouTube.com slash fantasy football today at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Sunday, right up until kickoff there as well, where we just basically answer your questions at YouTube.com slash fantasy football today. News and notes. Ryan Tannehill didn't practice. Probably, what do you think? Not going to play? we will find out today. What do you say? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good, 
good for the Chiefs DST, bad for the Titans. Um, yeah, I, I, okay. Is there a scenario that you're moving Derrick Henry out of your top five? If he doesn't practice on Friday, yes. Right. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, he's if, got. If he's sitting in street clothes next to Ryan Tannehill, having sunflower seeds, forget about it. Okay. Dontrell Hilliard week. I mean, the thing, the thing about it, Adam, is, is like, we could drop him to 20. Who's benching Derrick Henry? I don't drop him to 20. The Chiefs DST is 90%. The people who care about where they finish in their rankings care about where Derrick Henry's ranked. You're starting Derrick Henry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chiefs DST is two rostered right now. They're 90% rostered, but they, they would obviously get a boost if Tannehill's out. And Henry should be fine. He was limited with a foot injury, but he said he's fine. We go to our running back news. Jonathan Taylor mispracticed again. So, you know, Deion Jackson. Um, we talked about that yesterday. Let's do it one more time here. What would your expectations be for Deion Jackson at New England if Taylor's out? Dave. Number two fantasy running back because of volume, not because of talent, not because of target expectation. He might catch two or three passes. I don't think it'll be like the last time he started when Matt Ryan threw 57 times. Uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be a top 24 running back for me, but it's based on volume. He'd be ahead of, would he be ahead of the following backfields? Chiefs, Bills, Jets. Yes, yes, and yes. Would he be ahead of Kenyon Drake if Gus Edwards were out? I don't think so. Jamie, how about you? Jake or uh, Drake or uh, Deion Jackson? Probably Drake. Drake. Drake, Drake. Okay. DeAndre Drake. Swift was limited in practice. We'll talk about that game later. Cordaro Patterson practice. We still don't know if he is going to play. James Conner was limited. Cam Akers practiced in full. All these situations will be brought up on today's show. Not this one. Chuba Hubbard was limited. How are we feeling, Jamie, about the Panthers' backfield right now? I think it's still Deontay Foreman, even if Hubbard plays as the lead guy. Uh, Heath gave the split, I think it was yesterday on this show, where he said 60-40 rushing for Foreman and probably 50-50 or 60-40, maybe he said 70-30 passing for Hubbard. Uh, I think that might be where we see Hubbard have an opportunity, but I would say the rushing yep. is probably still 80-20 in favor of Foreman. Um, I can't imagine that they would take him out of those opportunities for significant stretches based on what he's done. So I'm still very comfortable with Foreman as a number two running back with Hubbard plays. Uh, he's a borderline number one for me if Hubbard is up. Damian Harris has missed two practices with an illness this week. I apologize. I didn't see an update on J.D. McKissick. Did he return to practice yesterday? He did not, not yesterday, no. Okay, so he still has a neck injury. Uh, Austin Eckler was limited with an abdomen injury, apparently just being cautious there. Dallas running backs coach Skip Pete said that Tony Pollard should max out at 30 plays a week or he won't be as quick or as fast, basically. I, I don't, I'm fine. 30 plays is fine, but can you make it 14, 15 carries? Can we get that from? It's not going to happen. So when, when, uh, one of, one of the, one of my favorite things about our Sunday show is we get, um, Tom Spencer on our show with us and he's in the booth. He's the research guy, the spotter for Jim Nance and Tony Romo. And they had the Cowboys game. I think it was week two or week three. And I ask him a lot of the same questions because he gets a lot of the same teams. They get a lot of the same teams. They get the Chiefs. They get the Steelers. They get the Patriots. You know, they get the the, the top AFC teams um, that are the biggest draws. But they had the Cowboys forget who they're playing. And I said, you know, what's what's the deal with Pollard and, and Zeke and just the split? And he said almost exactly what the running backs coach said, that they – this is at the time they were experimenting with Pollard a little bit more as a receiver. And they said anytime he runs routes, he's getting a little bit more gas each time. And so not that he's not in shape, but it's just the, the nature of you running down the field. You know, so they want to make sure he's fresh. So this kind of falls in line with, I think, everything that they've felt about him this entire season. They don't want to overwork him. It's certainly something to keep in mind for Dynasty. If he stays with the Cowboys, you just wonder if he'll ever be able to max out his potential. Uh, Gus Edwards mispractice. Wide receiver news. Rashad Bateman is out for the season with a foot injury. Deshaun Jackson could play this week. Meanwhile, in that same game, Michael Thomas is on IR. Finally, he has a dislocated toe. He tried to rehab it. He's not going to be able to. He needs surgery, and he's likely out for the season. So you can certainly drop Rashad Bateman. You could probably drop Michael Thomas. Probably. 
Yeah, I mean, I, he's not unless a it's a dynasty league or a keeper league. Why would you keep Michael Thomas? Well, I just because he's not a hundred percent out for the season, but he's probably pretty sure he's out for the season. Got Michael Thomas. Sorry, Jarvis Landry though. Uh, any interest in picking up Jarvis Landry, guys? If you want to wait and see what happens, you can. If you have a deep enough, you know, bench. Um, Clearly, there's there's an opportunity there. They they didn't go make a move to get a receiver, you know. So either they're really comfortable with what they have, knowing that Thomas. I mean, this this has been you know a lingering situation for weeks, and I guess they're just hoping that maybe he would get better, but it didn't. And so, can Landry give you a couple of weeks of good performances? Yes. Um, when will you be comfortable starting him? Probably never. So it's just a matter of who you're comparing him to. He's 26% rostered. He does have the Steelers next week, which on paper is a pretty good matchup. If he plays. Well, yeah, he's limited this week. He was limited in yesterday's practice, so I'll give him a decent chance to at least play next week. But all right, that's Jarvis Landry. Um, What else we got at wide receiver? Cooper Cup was limited. Matthew Stafford apologized for not targeting Van Jefferson at all last week. Alan Lazard was limited. Christian Watson's making some progress. Corey Davis, not unlikely to play. Keenan Allen seems unlikely to play. Devontae Parker seems unlikely to play. And that's the major stuff there. Russell Gage doesn't seem like he's going to play as of right now. Uh, tight end, Mark Andrews missed practice. Remember, they have the Monday game, so they've only had one practice this week, and Mark Andrews missed it. Cameron Brait limited. Darren Waller limited. Donald Parham missed practice with a hamstring injury. Just another boost for Gerald Everett if Parham doesn't play. Um... It, offensive line. Are there offensive lines that are particularly beat up? I'm looking at the Colts, the Cardinals, and the Bucks. I don't know if I'm missing. Nature's about Andrews, but that doesn't really matter. Okay. It looks like the Colts might have two guys out this week. Maybe. Oh, now that offensive line's really ruined. <laughs> well, you know, Deion Jackson could could use the help. Um. Yeah, but they that offensive line's been a problem all year. It has. Even when they were with their best guys let's beat the waiver wire we got four teams on by next week they are the ravens Bengals, patriots and jets so i, I mean i mentioned jarvis landry <laughs> not a lot of excitement for awesome that one. great huge. odell beckham you guys have any enthusiasm on adding odell beckham I mean, we still don't know where he's going, so it's so hard to determine if he's going to end up in, let's say, Buffalo, where there's just so many mouths to feed there. If he goes to the Giants and and you trust him with Daniel Jones, is he going back to the Rams? You know, and and how long will it take him to get up to speed from a health standpoint? There's just so many variables at this point. So if you have, again, similar to Landry, if you have a deep enough bench and you want to carry somebody that's not going to cost you anything, sure. Um, but in a in a five man bench, uh, no way. Okay. And maybe you feel the same way about Deshaun Watson. He's still weeks away, week 13. But if you want to stash him, it's time to at least start thinking about it. Uh, I did in one league, just, and I have Mahomes, but it just was that there was nobody on the waiver wire. So let me take away something that some, can help somebody else. You can always pick him up, and if somebody better comes along, you drop him for the somebody else. Some quarterbacks who have good matchups next week. Russell Wilson's at Tennessee. This, by the way, Dave helped me out with this list quite a bit. In fact, he basically did the whole thing. Um, except for Beckham, uh, Russell Wilson at Tennessee, Trevor Lawrence, if he's available at Kansas city, um, how about Dalton at Pittsburgh? It's not terrible. Um, I mean, all terrible. three of those Dalton quarterbacks, <laughs> Dalton, <laughs> uh, all three, of the, all three of those quarterbacks could be problematic. It's, it's almost like in the case of Lawrence and Dalton, you want to see what they do this week and kind of stash them for a week. And if you're comfortable with what you see, then you can use them as a bye week replacement or as a streaming option. Mm -hmm. And with Rush, you're not going to have that advantage. He's not playing this week. But if you liked how he played in the second half last week, yeah, maybe a bye week replacement. He's got a good matchup. Well, the whole point my of this favorite, my favorite one tonight. might be Mariota. Just saw him against the Panthers and they get some Thursday night again. Okay. That's not bad. Uh, Daniel Jones also gets Houston next week. Uh, Dalton is by far the most available of that group. Uh, running back, you know, there's not usually a lot of running backs on waivers. There are some handcuffs, but Darnell Mooney is still available in some leagues. Michael Gallup is uh, coming off a game where he he should have had a touchdown. He was wide open. He's 64% rostered. You got guys like MVS. Um, you know, let's see, Devin, what's Devin Duvernay's? Uh, he's 79% rostered. Right. You, know, he, he, you might find him in 10-team leagues, but he's on bye in week 10. Oh, that's right. 
What there, might there, happen there, there, is, are, there are some running backs, though. I mean, you could pick up Cam Akers to see what happens if he gets back in the good graces of his coaching staff. You could pick up basically two of the three Broncos running backs if you just want to speculate to see if it's Murray or Edmonds. Uh, those guys are available under 50% of leagues. Um, yeah. Good call. Jalen Warren, see what happens there. Um, about Naeem Hunt. No, not Hines. Zach Moss, 6% rostered. Could do that. Maybe, What's the best case up? scenario for him? I don't know. I mean, is it is it completely unrealistic that they just like him better than Deion Jackson? I don't. I don't think they will. But would it shock you? And go up. Oh, should have picked. It up. would shock oh. me if it happened this week. Right. Uh, by the way, just just in case, not not for next week, but for this week, just in case, maybe pick up Sony Michelle with Eckler on the injury report. Could do that. What were the receivers you said? I said MVS. I said Darnell Mooney. I said Michael Gallup. Those Mooney and Gallup are sixty-four percent rostered. Maybe Wandale Robinson or Darius Slayton. There's there's two. Uh, one to me is the easy choice is Donovan Peoples Jones. He's been playing very well, um, and they're coming off their bye. At my and end. then uh, Terrace Marshall, if he continues to get targets like this. Is not a bad option for deeper leagues. He's only 19% roster. All right, and he has Atlanta next week, right? Yep. And Cincinnati this week without their best cornerback. Yeah. Hey, raise your hand if you're starting Terrace Marshall in a league this week. I am too. Oh, cool. All right. I wish I were playing you. I'm going to be curious to see at the end of the season who wins the uh, the, the crappiest trade that Dan and I made um, in our dynasty league where I gave him Terrace Marshall and Kenny Galladay, and he gave me Melvin Gordon, a fourth round pick, which will end up being the last pick in the third round because he's the worst team in the league. And uh, a third round pick in the rookie draft at the time, which ended up being Hassan Haskins. So we'll see who ends up winning that crappy. Wow. Pick. Oh, what a, what a trade. Inside. Hey, just, just to put it out there in the past two weeks, Terrace Marshall's had a 21% target share. He's had two red zone targets. He's had three end zone targets. So I think PJ Walker, we know he loves throwing to DJ Moore, but he's been throwing a little bit to Marshall too. I'm, I'm happy to stash them in a bunch of leagues. I've got one question for each game. Let's start with Seattle at Arizona. Start or sit the Seahawks passing game, Jamie. Start the Seahawks passing game, Adam. <laughs> How confident are and you, you guys? Want, you want a, a potential sleeper. Keep an eye on the tight end situation there for the Seahawks because Noah Fant, who's been outperforming Will Disley, is dealing with a hamstring injury. And we know what tight ends do against the Cardinals. So if Fant is out, this league might get a bump in targets and has a chance to score. All right. Just confidence o meter, zero to ten for Geno Smith. Six. Uh, with six teams on a bye, I would say Geno Smith is a seven. Okay. Here's the thing about the six teams being on a bye, though. Who are the quarterbacks? Brissett, six of them. Wilson. Daniel Jones, Kenny Pickett, Garoppolo, and Dak Prescott. So it's really only Dak is one that you'd be starting ahead of Geno. Maybe Garoppolo. Maybe. All right. Uh, question for Green Bay at Detroit. How do you approach the Green Bay wide receivers, Dave? You're starting Lazard. Dobbs is probably more of a low-end number three receiver or a bi-week replacement receiver. And we're done here. Okay. What if Lazard's yeah. out? Dobbs moves up into a high end number three receiver, and we're done here. That that's it, just a high end number three receiver. Jamie, would you that's be more it. optimistic on Dobbs if Lazard were out? Well, there's six teams on a bot. No, um, <laughs> I, I think when you when you look at uh, what your receiving core is, um, he's in that Christian Kirk, Michael Pittman, Rondell Moore, yep. slightly behind Josh Palmer, but in that same range. You know, guys that there's there's certainly a path to production. Uh, there's a definite path to targets. But will there be a, a concrete, he's going to deliver a big game? No. So he's uh, borderline number two, number three. Two. Half of it is that he played well in the last three quarters last week. Half of it is he's playing Detroit. Yeah. All right. The Rams at the Bucks. Start or sit Tom Brady? I would sit Tom Brady if you can. I, I like him. He's a low-end starter for me. Would take him over Geno Smith, for example. He's just he's he's moving the ball well enough to have more than one game this year with multiple touchdowns. 
I just we haven't seen it. It's been close. It's been really close. Rams run defense is tough. Pass defense a little worse. I think Brady can come through with two scores and they're throwing so much. I think they're the pass heaviest team in the league. I, I can't help it. I still think he's got 300 yard, two touchdown upside. Since since week one, the Rams have allowed 11.5 fantasy points per game to oppose a quarterback. Right, but who have those quarterbacks been? Guys that are on par with Tom Brady's production from a fantasy perspective. Is that even true? Yes. I'll tell you. Josh Allen in week one, Mariota, Kyler Murray had a terrible game. Garoppolo, Cooper Rush, Carolina quarterbacks, and then Garoppolo again. Garoppolo scored 21 fantasy points in the second game, and McCaffrey threw a touchdown. So, uh, but you know, it's been Garoppolo twice. Kyler Murray, I would say, is the only well great quarterback that they did well against. So Garoppolo is averaging 18 fantasy points per game. Brady's at 17.1. Uh, Kyler definitely has more fantasy points per game. And Mariota was one of those quarterbacks. He's at 17.9. So, yeah, I, I guess you're right. Brady's you're been right around a lot of You're not starting Brady based on what he's done. You're starting Brady based on what he, what he could what be. What he can do. And what yeah, he I mean, look, I think he's 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 in the same, uh, you know, you want to start him over Geno. I can't fight you on that. But I would I would start Geno. I like Trevor Lawrence better this week than, than Brady, but they're all in the same range, you know. So right. um, I, I, I've seen a lot of, you know, because I have Fields at the start of the week, there's no way I'm benching Brady for Fields. That's fine. You know, if you want to you play the – this is the week that Brady breaks out. You know, he played this team eight months ago in the, in the playoffs. You know, things are certainly different for everything factoring in. No Godwin in that game. Offensive line significantly worse. You know, so there are side, both sides of the, you know, equation here that are positive and negative for Brady. He had 15 fantasy points in that game despite throwing for 329 yards. You know, so um, I think the yards will be there if he gets to, to two touchdowns, which will be the second time this season that he has a multiple touchdown game. He'll probably cross the 20-point threshold. I'm going to take the under just based on what I've seen, what this defense has allowed. So I can't imagine he feels pretty good knowing that the interior of that offensive line is such a disaster and 99 is coming right at his face, you know, so he's going to run a lot. He's going to be going to get out of the pocket and it's true. (laughs) All right. Miami hit Chicago. Do you trust any running backs in this game? Let's go. We'll go faster here, guys. You trust any running backs in the Miami Chicago game? Yeah. Yeah. Raheem. Yep. Yep. He most of the he has two games, sorry, two games this year with more than 11 PPR fantasy points, Raheem Mostert. It's kind of sneaky uh, uh, production. Yeah, but in, in terms of do I expect him to have a huge game? I don't know if you can say that. Do I trust him enough that I'm starting him this week given the matchup and the workload that he's had? Yes. So in terms of trust, I will play him. I don't necessarily think it's a slam dunk, though, because of exactly what you said. And you I have like Jeff Wilson. Him. Yeah, I, I, I think Wilson matters a little bit. I love the matchup. Bears are the second worst run defense in yards per game allowed on the ground this season. And they just lost Roquan Smith. So right. I think there's huge opportunity here for the Dolphins to actually run the ball effectively and take some pressure off of Tua. I know we don't want to hear that because we're starting Tua. That's another quarterback that's an easy start over Brady and over Geno. But I, I think there's still potential there. He should see at least 65% of the snaps and maybe even more of the touches. Uh, I kind of like Montgomery as a low end number two running back just because he's been getting the high value touches in this offense over the majority of the season. All right. Minnesota's at Washington. Are you feeling it and feeling or Antonio Gibson? <laughs> same question feeling, for the Vikings. Every feelings week. in that same group of Romeo Dobbs receivers. So high end number three, low end number two receiver. Probably need to score to be successful. I don't like the fact that he was limping around so much last week. I know he's not an injury report, but it just seemed like he was getting beat up. And we've seen what that's like for him. So now they have another mouth to feed in the offense. That's a little bit better than the other tight ends that they had. Um, who knows if Osborne starts to take a little bit more work away. So, I again, I think it just comes down to who you have. Every week, it's going to be the same thing with Adam Thielen. He's, he's not a slam dunk receiver in two receiver leagues. He's a pretty good option in three receiver leagues. And hopefully this is one of those weeks where he finds the end. Okay. How about uh, what's and, and over Gibson? Uh, if there's no JD McKissick, I'd rather have Gibson. Would you start? <laughs> would you start Adam Thielen or Christian Kirk? Christian Kirk, who's Kirk's against who again? <laughs> who's Kirk playing? Uh damn it. I did not prepare for this. I did not pick a game of the week. So I'm just gonna The Raiders 
Mississippi Jaguars A last minute game of the week And Dave's getting good at this Finally Leaders and the Jaguars, yeah All right, sorry You did get our producer, Zach Brook, though Because in our oh. private chat on StreamYard He wrote in all caps, the Raiders <laughs> Legitimately thinking that you did not know who Christian Kirk was playing. Way to go, buddy. All right, Baltimore at New Orleans. How much do you like the replacements in this game? Dalton, likely, and the Baltimore wide receivers. Um, I think DuVernay is worth using as a number three receiver, you know, just with the hope that there's a slight bump of targets. And, you know, you beat the waiver wire guys, Demarcus Robinson, you know, based on what he did last week. You know, if they're going to throw the ball like they did, um, eight targets – and they're desperate right now. So you're not going to get a huge game from him. But, you know, 14-team league, three receivers starts, that's not a bad guy to just see what happens. But that's like the only type of format that I would pick yeah. up Marcus Robinson in because we've been fooled you by him a lot. Uh, hopefully you've already picked up Isaiah Likely. No guarantee he's going to be the guy because if Mark Andrews plays, he's. I would think that they would put him on the field more without Bateman there. He's He's a good receiver. So maybe they use him a little bit more even if Andrews plays, but the doors kick down for him to be a top 10, if not top five tight end. If there is no Andrews, Andrews hasn't practiced yet this week. You should pick him up now in anticipation that Andrews does not play. Okay. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll start with Seattle at Arizona. We'll be right back on fantasy football today. All right. Our first game is a rematch of a week six matchup. That was not so great for fantasy. Um, Seattle at Arizona. And I already told you DK Metcalf's got this bad history against the Cardinals. And, you know, we got this whole thing of the Cardinals taking away the deep ball and Geno Smith, you know, not that's that's his strength. He's one of the best downfield throwers in football this year. It's basically him and Josh Allen. So is it a good matchup for Seattle? Well, it certainly wasn't in week six. So with all that said, Jamie, you know, your confidence level, you said, you, you know, pretty confident in Geno Smith and you're starting Metcalf and Lockett and you want to just put an exclamation point on it. I'm going to trust Vegas in this one. You know, the over unders, I think the last time I checked was 50. Um, you know, so they're expecting this to be a lot higher scoring than the 19, nine game. This was earlier in the, in, in the season. Um, I think the hope would be is that the Cardinals offense shows up and, and, you know, gets this game into the twenties on their, their side of the ledger. Um, so the Seahawks have to counterpunch. So I think based on what Geno has shown this season, that he's run at times, he's certainly thrown with success at times, that in this type of scenario where it could be a little bit more up up and down, back and forth, that he'll get in the neighborhood of 20 fantasy points. Is he going to be in the in the 25 plus point range? I don't expect that to happen, but I would love to see it. So I think Gino is an okay starter. I just don't think he is a top five starter this week. All right. So and Walker's a must start. DeAndre Hopkins is a must start. And um, Rondell Moore. Let's talk. Well, how about, yeah. I'm, okay. Are you worried about Kyler Murray? Because the Seahawks defense has been just like freaking great lately. And yeah. I see the way you rank him. It doesn't seem like you're worried about Kyler Murray. But Dave, like, are you worried about Kyler Murray? Not worried about Kyler Murray. I think that he's, I, he's a much. I don't want to say he's a better quarterback now than a few weeks ago, but he certainly feels a lot cooler when he throws. I think he feels more comfortable now with Hopkins back. That's what I've been seeing over the past couple of games. And I don't blame him for it. He's got a stud receiver playing on the outside and he's targeting him like crazy. I'm starting Kyler Murray. I'm okay with Rondell Moore and PPR as a high end flex. Put him in that range that Jamie was talking about. Would have a tough time starting him over like Gabe Davis or Tyler Boyd, but I like him better than Dobbs. I like him better than Mooney Robinson, those types of guys. I'd start him over Garrett Wilson. You're talking about I'm Rondell Moore, right? I'm talking about Rondell Moore. You're okay. kind of hoping that he has a, a big play, like a catch and run, like he did last week, maybe a couple of those, but I can't ignore eight targets in three of the past four games. You want to catch and run from him? Well, the Seahawks allow the most yards after catch per catch in the NFL, the most yak per catch in the NFL. Nice. And the fifth, the fifth most yards per catch to slot to uh, slot receivers. Ron Moore's already faced them. He had six catches for 49 yards on 10 targets. Um, but overall, they allow the third fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. So I don't want to yeah. go too deep into this game here. Well, uh, say, just, just going back to Kyler, it ha he had one of the weirdest stat lines in this game because remember, he ran for 100 yards. Mm -hmm. And so 
if you'd say any quarterback is going to run for 100 yards, you're expecting 20 plus points, maybe close to 30 points. He just didn't score. And so 222 passing yards and an interception. That's all. I think it's the game that, that Marquise Brown got hurt, if I'm not mistaken, too. Um, so, you know, hope, and it was late in the game. I know that. But still, you know, I, I think you're hoping that if he's north of 60 yards rushing, which that was, that was the only time he's ever done that. But if, if clearly we've seen that we're from Seattle, they give up uh, rushing production to, to quarterbacks. If he can do that again, you know, use his legs to that level and and throw for close to 250, he'll have a he'll have a pretty decent day. Okay, and then Zach. Well, we'll come. Last thing we'll do is the uh, running backs for Arizona. But starter sit Zach Ertz, who has nine targets in two games with DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> I'm reluctant, but what choice do you have? You have to be loaded at tight end to 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 roll with Zach Ertz. They stink against tight ends too, and he destroys them. Seven catches, 70 yards, three games ago. Again, no Hopkins, 10 targets. You just, I, I've seen it now. I saw it last year, and I'm seeing it this year, that Ertz just isn't as involved, and it makes me nervous. And the touchdown last week felt a little fluky. His so last four games against run. Seattle, this this is fun. Um, 12 for 91, a touchdown. That was a Philly. Uh, and then these <laughs> three with the, the Seahawks. Eight for 88 and two touchdowns. Seven for 84, seven for 70. My and goodness. they're bad against the position. You know, they so just gave 58 yards to Tanner Hudson. Uh, you don't, yeah, I'm not know any way for Zach Ertz this week. I, 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 I get what Dave's saying. He's, he's 100% right. There's reason to be concerned, right. especially Marquise Brown's coming right. back. What are you going to do? Right. So, but if I have Zach Ertz, there's no way I'm getting away from him this week. Uh, and he's a good DFS play, too. If Isaiah Likely, if you knew on Sunday that Isaiah Likely was going to start and Mark Andrews were out, would you start Likely or Ertz? I'd probably still start Ertz just because how bad Seattle is. Yeah. Okay. I think I agree. I think I agree. Uh, Jamie already mentioned the Seattle, the yeah, Seattle tight ends as sleepers um, because Arizona is also terrible against tight ends. And how about the Arizona running backs, guys? Uh, James Conner. How question. about them? <laughs> like, do you have any interest in starting a, a Seattle running back or an Arizona running back? I mean, he knows the borderline number two running back just because of the volume that he'll get. And hopefully, you know, we, we get a little bit more clarity if Connor does come back, what the split looks like. If Connor does come back, and the only reason, the only reason I say that is because long term, but if Connor does come back, it would be hands off. You know, Connor would be the preferred choice, but more of a flex play because I think they'll still split touches. Um, the fact that Daryl Williams is out, I think, would be encouraging for, you know, Benjamin because the last time we saw Benjamin in this setup where he was the featured guy, it was him and Keontae Ingram. Granted, they ran the ball with a lot of success against the Saints. I don't think that'll be the same thing this week, but volume does matter in a week where there are six teams on a bye. So Benjamin, by default, with no Connor, will be in the starting conversation. I assume you'd start Deion Jackson if yes. Taylor were out of Yes. Left. All right. Okay, and that's the end of that chapter. Let's go to Green Bay at Detroit. Stat of the game. Alan Lazard has had seven to nine targets in four. <laughs> you got that reference, Dave? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, seven to nine targets in four straight games for Alan Lazard. Okay. So how, what is that? How does that measure up against the Lions? There have been eight wide receivers with seven to nine targets against the Lions. Seven of them had 70 yards or a touchdown. Noah Brown is the only one who did that. Six of those eight have scored 15 or more PPR fantasy points. So I don't think I have to tell you to start Lazard. Uh, but, but if he's out, and Dobbs gets seven to nine targets or seven or more targets, which could easily happen. That is usually a home run against the Detroit Lions. So, Dave, as I throw that stat at you, you were you were kind of you know, tepid on uh, on Romeo Dobbs, even with Lazard out, right? So, what you think about that, Jack? I called him a high end number three receiver. He's a top thirty receiver as I rank him right now with Lazard out. So, I think that's still pretty good for for Romeo Dobbs. I'm not going to throw him into my top 20 or anything like that. Can you tell because me some he of the still makes some mistakes. Can you tell me some of the guys you have ahead of him? Sure. We already mentioned Rondell Moore, Christian Kirk's ahead of him, uh, Tyler Boyd, Josh Palmer, Jacoby Myers, um, DeAndre Hopkins, Cooper Cup. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it might be beneficial for me to tell you if there is no Lazard, I'm starting Dobbs easily over Darnell Mooney, over Garrett Wilson, over MVS, over Alec Pierce, Curtis Samuel, um, Claypool. Like he's he's ahead of those guys. I'm taking the chance on him because of the matchup. Your your stat is awesome. It's totally legit. And it's just further evidence that Detroit A 
is having a hard time getting pressure on the quarterback and B having a hard time defending wide receivers. So as long as Dobbs can hold on to the football, run the proper route, be on the same page as Aaron Rodgers, he should be a good fantasy receiver. He should have a very good game. I just don't know if that's going to be the case because he's made a bunch of mistakes this year. Yeah, Detroit actually has a star in their secondary and Jeff Jeff Okuda, and uh, he has not given up a touchdown this year. And he wasn't. He actually had good numbers last week when they got shredded by the Dolphins. But without Lazard last week, Romeo Dobbs played about half his snaps in the slot, which is exciting. I mean, that's a good place to be for uh, for an Aaron Rodgers wide receiver. That's, that's where Lazard is a lot. All right, Jamie, how do you feel about Aaron Rodgers this week? He has been between. 19.8 and 20.9 fantasy points in six of eight games. It's pretty remarkable. Can he get more than that? Will he get more than that against the Lions who give up the third most points to quarterbacks? I think he will. You know, I would start him over Brady. I would start him over Geno. I have him slightly behind fields, one spot behind fields, because I think it's a little bit more upside of the fields. But um, yep. this is the first time in a long time I have Rodgers in the top 10. Uh, his history against Detroit, as you would probably expect, is just absolutely ridiculous so hopefully that matters here um I, I think this is kind of a get right game for him you know we keep talking about buy low on brady this is not a bad guy to potentially buy low on from the expectations of will he be a top five quarterback maybe not but can he start to get back into the top 10 consistently i think there's a chance if lazard is healthy and, and somebody else steps up to help him i like robert tunyon this week a lot too i think there's a good opportunity for him to play well so uh just just for for fun rogers has played 24 games against detroit can you guess his stats in what regard, like average or his total total yards, total touchdowns, total interceptions. Uh, and so basically a season and a half. <laughs> um, I'm just going to do touchdowns and interceptions. You said 18, 24 gonna... games. Oh, 20, 24. Yeah, I'm sorry. 24 games. Uh, I'm going to guess 62 touchdowns, three <laughs> interceptions, 62 and three. Uh huh. Dave, what about you? Uh, I will say 55 touchdowns and six interceptions. It's 52 and eight interceptions. So, and, 6, <laughs> and that in, he sucks. That's going to include some games where it was like week 17 slash 18, like the last so there was one of those, season. I think, last year. Um, yeah, it was like, where it's just a throwaway. He's barely playing. Um, why, why are you so high on Tunyon? Is, is it because you're not ranking Alan Lazard? Is that going to change if Lazard plays? I might drop him down a couple of spots, but you know, I, I think Tunyon is is a guy that can have some success in this matchup. He's scored in three straight games against Detroit. It's over a two year period, but um, you know, I, I think that matters. You know, when you're talking about how history plays itself out, was was certainly with this quarterback. And so you're looking for what you know. Who who we're going to continue to say this until it, you know we're probably still probably stupid for saying it, but guys that he trusts. And you know, Robert Tunyon is still a guy they trust. He should have had a touchdown last week. He had a silly push off penalty that probably didn't yep. matter. Um, you know, I, I just looking at the tight end landscape right now, I'll, I'll take Robert Tunyon against the Lions. Over Kyle Pitts? Yes. Over um, Isaiah Likely if Andrews is no. out? No. Okay. You're taking Tunyon over Pitts? Yes. Dave? I would rather have Pitts. Okay. Uh, Green Bay running backs, of course, start Aaron Jones, but the Lions have played seven games in four of them. They've allowed a, a second running back to score 11 or more PPR fantasy points, which would be the second best game of the year for AJ Dillon. <laughs> if he could get there. Um, I originally had a lineup with Dillon in it. I picked up Deion Jackson. And I plan to start Jackson over Dillon, but where do you guys have Dillon ranked in your top 30 this week? Dave, just real quick on this. I've got Dillon at 36. Um, He's in my top 20 this week. Whoa. Okay. Not so quick on this bed. We got to talk about this. He's going to score this week. Are you sure? Yes. He has two games in his last four with six or fewer carries. Like they've just gone. They've just gone to Aaron Jones. Let's see uh, how many snaps he's played inside the 10 over his last four. Oh, games. they don't get inside the 10. They have almost no goal line carries. You can't even make statements about this like oh he's been on the field and when they're inside the five like, they just don't get there <laughs> it's kind of annoying uh all right so dave's not in on dylan jamie likes him as a number two running back this week that's the packers any interest in jared goff this week not really okay golf or dalton dalton 
Goff or Mariota? Mariota. But you have Goff ahead of right now. You're gonna keep this Goff ahead of Derek Carr and Matthew Stafford. Correct. All right. Uh, to the Lions running backs. Jamie, I'll give you the first word on the Lions running backs. What are we doing here with Swift and Williams? The Packers are allowing 5.15 yards per carry to running backs. Barf. I think you got to trust what the Lions are telling us. You know, that Jamal Williams is the guy they feel more comfortable with right now. The fact that Dan Campbell, as you alluded to yesterday, saying that we gave DeAndre Swift one too many carries in five uh, was the number. You know, so if they're going to go back and, and just continue to make Jamal Williams the feature guy, you know, in a game against his former team, he didn't fare well in this matchup last year, you know, facing his former team, but he's doing a much better job. He's certainly their preferred goal line option. He's second in the NFL in rushing touchdowns behind Nick Chubb. So he has a chance to score. I think we got to pencil it on a weekly basis and see how that goes. And, you know, work in the passing game is, is probably a little bit in favor of DeAndre Swift, but probably not so far off that you can't, you know, expect a couple of catches from Jamal Williams, especially now with TJ Hawkinson gone and their preferred replacement, Brock Wright, dealing with a concussion. So, you know, Jamal Williams, I think, is the better of the two. He's a, you know, borderline top 15 running back this week. Agreed. And it's an 11 to 2 touch advantage for, for Williams over Swift inside the 10 in the four games that they've played together. As for the Packers, inside the 10, you were right, Adam. Since week five, eight snaps. <laughs> Dylan leads with five of the eight, and they all came against the Giants on October 9th. Mm. So he's at zero yeah, since in America. He it doesn't get any of those carries because that was in London. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, super super funny joke. Good. I'm gonna bang. I'm gonna put that one in the in the bank there. All right, Jamal Williams or Deontay Foreman? If Hubbard doesn't play, and if Hubbard does play, Jamal Williams or Deontay Foreman? I'll take I'm Foreman either way. Yeah, Jamal Williams or you know or uh, sorry, uh, Antonio Gibson. Williams over both of those guys. Uh, Williams over Benjamin is close with Gibson. Jamal Williams or Joe Mixon? Mixon. I'll go Gibson PPR over Jamal Williams. If Swift plays. If Swift right, is out. Mixon. And I just want to let you know. It's probably if McKissick's out too, right? Yes. Jamal Williams is not the third down back, whether Swift's in there or not. They'll either use Craig Reynolds mm -hmm. or they'll use DeAndre Swift. Good point. They don't use Jamal Williams. Doesn't mean he can't catch the ball. It's just he's probably not going to do it on third down. Um, uh, last one, Jamal Williams or DK Metcalf? Uh, Jamal Williams. Williams for Jamie, Metcalf for Dave. Jamal Williams or Tyler Lockett? Same, Lockett. Uh, Jamal Williams. Start Amandra St. Brown. Any interest in Josh Reynolds? 48% roster. Two straight games with 14 or fewer yards and no touchdowns. Bam. Josh Reynolds. Doesn't he have a back issue? He's got a knee, a back. I mean, this is the uh, the guy in the operation board at this point, you know. So it's just been so frustrating to watch how everything's unfolded for this guy, but there's no Hawkinson. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so hopefully he starts to he starts to play a little bit better, but my gosh, man, stay healthy. Uh, all right, so don't start. I have to start him in a week too. Great, great week. I mean, I, same week? Terrace Marshall, go get I, Terrace Marshall. You wouldn't even believe some of the. Let me check my my magazine league wide receivers, and you all can have a nice chuckle. I have Jamar Chase, and I think Michael Thomas in this league. So um, right now, three receiver PPR league. I am starting Chris Godwin, Josh Reynolds, Robert Woods, and Terrace Marshall. So congratulations to the other team who's going to win. I'm gonna uh, go just the just the league, so I play this week. <laughs> uh, sit uh, the Detroit tight ends all right Green Bay's DST is in play they've been awful but uh you know I don't know <laughs> what, try not to start them if you can 55%. oh nice I play you in that league this week <laughs> your team is Medulin Oblongata <laughs> yeah it's for Aston Doolin <laughs> You're probably uh, the only person in America that named their team after. I, I could, I could do it. I, I'm going to rename my team after someone who's currently on my team. Reynolds Rap will be my team name because <laughs> your season's a wrap. Yes, I'm five and three, so you know, hopefully, I could hold out until Jamar Chase gets back. Promo time. We'll be right back on fantasy football today. We have four games left. When we come back, we'll be uh, talking Rams and Bucks after this. Rams and Bucks. Tampa Bay secondary getting a lot healthier. That's a pretty big storyline here. A lot healthier going into this game. And I already told you earlier that Stafford and Brady are 27th and 29th respectively in touchdown rate this year. 
Last year, they were both top six. So they have been terrible throwing the ball. I mean, have they been terrible or unlucky? I don't know. But in the end zone, just terrible numbers. And uh, Stafford is not even a consideration for you guys this week. Brady is kind of a borderline start. We'll just do some Tom Brady ors right now. Even if we've already done them, please bear with me. Tom Brady or Joe Burrow? Burrow. I have Brady a spot higher. Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers? Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady or Trevor Lawrence? Lawrence. Brady. Tom Brady or Derek Carr? Brady. Brady. Okay. Um, any hesitation on Leonard Fournette? Zero. It's almost the same thing as Zach Ertz. You, you know that he isn't so great. He has been great lately, but realistically, who are you starting over him? Right. Well, I'll, I'll give you a name. Jamal Williams? No. You you could consider that. Maybe in non-PPR, I think that works. I think Deontay Foreman should start ahead of Fournette. There are... Oh, wow. I would not do that in PPR. No. You would do that in PPR, Dave? I, mean, you I got think I would. I, just because I'm, I feel like Fournette, he's got to get those catches, and he's got to score. You mean he ha- for you to for him to be better than Fortnite. for him to be good for fantasy? Yes. Uh, there are three teams that do not have a carry of twenty or more yards this year. One of them is the Bucks. Mm-hmm. The other two are Rams. On- one of them? No, they have one, <laughs> and it's probably from a from a wide receiver. It's my I think it was from Cup. Uh, the other two teams are on by. They don't have a twenty yard carry this year. Any guesses? <laughs> Shouldn't take too long. Denver? Correct. Correct. Steelers. Pittsburgh, yep. All right, so start Fournette. Start Mike Evans. Start Chris Godwin. Would you start Godwin over the Seattle wide receivers? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm assuming you're going to avoid Julio Jones and Cameron Brait? Yes. Yes. Julio okay. is in the uh, Terrace Marshall hope for big play type situation. This is game is probably pretty easy. You're going to sit the Rams running backs, I assume? No, I'm so excited about them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you would, you, would you start the Rams running backs if no. you could get points for all of them? No, no, probably not. If you had to pick one, who would it be? Uh, still Henderson. I, I, I'd like to see Akers play and just go out there and say big middle fingers to this guy and say, you should have been playing me all along, and this is what you're going to get the rest of the season, but that's not realistic. All right, and how about Cooper Cup uh, is a start. How about Allen Robinson? He's 79% rostered. I think you guys have him around 30th or so. Yeah. This is where I would bring up the fact that there's six teams on by, and you are you might be hurting at wide receiver. There's a lot of injured wide receivers. Robinson is 30th for me in full PPR. And 37th for Jamie. Would you start Romeo Dobbs if Lazard plays or Allen Robinson? Dobbs. I might go Robinson. You he's on a good start. two game stretch. He is, and he's got an 17 and 10 points. It's, it's very every, impressive. Every game. And his secondary is beat up, too. No, it's not, though. They're getting pretty healthy. Carlton Davis back. Sean Murphy Bunting, I think, is going to be back. Antoine Winfield progressing through the concussion protocol. I mean, they're going to mm-hmm. be a lot healthy, but no Shaq Barrett. We haven't talked about that. This is going to be their first game in forever without Shaq Barrett. Well, now that offensive line is great for the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> No, but Robinson, like Robinson, end zone target every game, and Stafford just so bad throwing into the end zone. So, if you're sitting there and you're desperate, Robinson has a probably a better chance to score than a lot of other wide receivers. Um, here's a good one. How about MVS or Robinson? MVS. I'll take Robinson. How do you feel about Tyler Higby? He has run a combined 35 routes in his last two games, and for context, he ran 37 and 47 routes in the previous two games individually. So his routes are down the last two weeks. I don't know why. He's uh, blocking. It can't be that. It's not like this is the first time they've had a bad offensive line. I don't know what's going on. It's worth looking into, but didn't he miss a bunch of snaps last week? Oh, really? I don't think he missed that many. Okay. He missed a handful. I mean, that could be part of it, but he only ran 15 routes. That's super low, season low by far. But anyway, starter sit Tyler Higby against a team that's 
gives up the tenth most points to tight ends. You're still starting him unless you have better options. Yeah, uh, I've got him in my top ten, but I think it's worth looking into what you brought up. So I'm going to do that today. Uh, how about Kyle Pitts or Higby? Pitts, Higby and PPR, Pitts and none. How about Tunyon or Higby? Tunyon. Higby as of now. All right. Uh, that's it for that game. S- uh, sit the DSTs? Or you, uh, I wouldn't say that, actually. What do you think? I like the Bucks DST. I mean, I think they're going to get after Matthew Stafford like every other quarterback, every other team does. And I don't think the Rams are horrible because Brady's not putting up a lot of points. Right. I think the Rams is kind of stinky. Not a great week for DSTs. We talked about no. that. Uh, double digit fantasy points to opposing DSTs against the Rams in four straight games. Miami is at Chicago. Here's the stat of the game that's once again in Raheem Mostert's favor. Let's hope he doesn't stink up the joint like he did last week. A running back has 17, scored 17 or more PPR fantasy points in six of the last seven games against the Bears. So fingers crossed. Let's make it happen. Raheem Mostert. Um, make sure Jeff Wilson's rostered, please. That's a great idea. Yep. Just uh, just an overall question here. Look at Tua's season. You know, if you just look at the raw numbers, you'd think he's an MVP candidate, leading the NFL in, in QB rating, QBR, and yards per attempt. Uh, but he's only had two good fantasy games. Those two games were 51 points against Baltimore, 35 points against Detroit. Um, the Bears actually have been a, a, a very good pass defense. Is it because of competition? Maybe. But for what it's worth... They've been a good pass. The fifth fewest passing yards per game, fifteenth in yards per attempt. Um, do you, you, you know, do you have any concerns about? How two dare you this? disrespect the combination of Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi? <laughs> well, Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins. The rain game against Trey Lance. Yes, it's been fluky. No, but Kirk Cousins was was part of that. Um, Dak, well, Dak Prescott tore them apart. Anyway, are you? you how do you feel about Tua? Do you feel good? Do you feel great about Tua this week? Great. I think great's a great word. I mean, I mean, think about what they've just lost. They lost Robert Quinn and Roquan Smith in back-to-back weeks. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, all right, Moster, we talked about a little bit earlier. I, did I ask you this, Roaster, uh, Roaster, Roaster mm-hmm. or Williams, uh, J- Jamal Williams or Raheem Mostert? Mostert has him now. I think Williams will leapfrog Mostert if Swift doesn't play. Oh, that's easy. Yes. Okay. Um, starter sit Tyreek Hill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Start Hill, start Waddle. Mike Asicki, starter sit. I started. I kinda, yeah, I kind of like him. I, he's had end zone targets each of the past three games. He's caught touchdowns in two of those three. He should have caught one against Pittsburgh, too. They seem to like throwing to him when they're between like three and 15 yards away from the end zone. Okay. Right, and Jamie. I thought it was you. Was it you who brought up that Tyreek Hill doesn't have a target this year inside the 20? Oh, no, I didn't, but I wouldn't be surprised. Is that the case? He doesn't have a red zone target? I think that's right. Someone brought it up. Brought it wow. Up. Sucks. Jamie, Justin Fields, start of the week. What are your expectations? I expect him to be uh, his third straight game over 20 fantasy points. I hope third straight game over 25 fantasy points. Um, He's certainly playing with a lot more poise. I like the fact that they added a receiver this week with the hope of maybe throwing the ball a little bit more. But really why you're banking on Justin Fields is you're banking on him for his rushing production on top of what what he's able to do as a passer. 60 yards or more in three straight games. uh, Back-to-back, excuse me, two of those games over 80 yards rushing, two touchdowns on the ground. Over that span, the Dolphins are going to pressure him. He's going to do good, do a good job escaping the pressure and hopefully finding his guys down the field and Darnell Mooney and now Chase Claypool. And so this Dolphins defense allows an average of 21 fantasy points per game. I would expect Fields to be slightly better than that. And so I'll say 23 fantasy points makes him a top 10 guy for this week. Uh, a great guy to pick up off waivers, as we told you on Tuesday. And a guy, as Heath has been saying, you could start for the next three games based on their upcoming schedule. It wasn't you. It was one of our researchers, and it's not true. He actually has one red zone target this year. Tyreek Hill does. Okay. You know how many Jalen Waddle has? Six. That's exactly correct. Bam. Do you know how many Mike Gesicki has? Four. As many as Tyreek and Waddle combined. Oh, seven? Your Team math leader. is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's my strong suit. Um, 
not really, just compared to the other subjects, you know, which weren't, weren't very good. Justin Fields is ninth for Jamie, eighth for Dave, and eleventh for Heath. So um, you're still not starting him over Justin Herbert, even with the absences there. I think that would be an interesting one for people. But we did a I did a YouTube poll yesterday during our chat. It was Justin Fields, Khalil Herbert, Justin Fields, Justin Herbert, Kirk Cousins, and Geno Smith. I wanted to see who would win that, and Herbert won it, you know, fairly easily. All righty. The Bear, you know, the Bears running backs. David Montgomery has 15 carries in three straight games. In those three games, Khalil Herbert has seven, 12, and 16 carries. Khalil Herbert has 74 or more total yards in three straight games. You know, maybe people are just tempted to say, no, I don't want to start them, but Maybe you, maybe you still can. And Dave, you said earlier that you kind of like Montgomery. He gets the high value touches. And look, they lost by 20 points last week, and those guys combined for 31 carries. So, all right, tell me, tell me what you think about Montgomery and Herbert. I'm nervous to start either one of them. They are both ranked in my top 24 this week. Montgomery <laughs> higher, but it's hmm. it it's it's a little frustrating just because of how many running backs are out of the mix or hurt or what have you where they, they fall into this range where you should be able to squeeze out anywhere from, I, I guess we have to say seven PPR points in the case of Khalil Herbert to 13, 14 for Montgomery. Yeah. Herbert breaks basically never catches the ball. How another you- situation where the backup is better. Oh, for sure. Talent wise. I agree. It's just the coaching staff and who they prefer. How would you guys rank these, these two compared to, uh, how about Kenyon Drake, assuming Gus Edwards is out? Drake I, curr- over I currently have Montgomery one spot ahead of Drake in PPR. Okay. Deion Jackson, assuming Taylor's out. Jackson over both. Jackson will be over Herbert. I'm not sure if I'm going to put him ahead of Montgomery. Antonio Gibson, assuming McKissick is out. Gibson over everybody we've named so far. Gibson for sure over Herbert. For now, he's ranked behind Montgomery. McKissick has had a pretty limited role. Uh, you know, you're not replacing a lot of touches here. Just, I mean, that's our next game. No, but you're replacing playing time, and and Gibson's got ten catches the last two games. Yeah, um, right. I mean, he's had that even with McKissick playing. How much better right. can they get there? But um, okay. And uh, would you start? By the way, by the way, in their last four games, the Dolphins have allowed more than five yards per carry to Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, and Jamal Williams. And they allowed 3.8 yards per carry to Najee Harris, which is like allowing 3.8 yards per carry to B. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, would you start a Chicago wide receiver today or tomorrow or Sunday, whatever this game is being played, <laughs> whenever you set your lineup? Um, when got- he's a starter in a three-receiver league, he's not a starter yeah. in a two-receiver league. He's certainly better in PPR than non-PPR, yet to score his first touchdown. But he does have 12 or more PPR points in three of his last five games. He just would like to see more volume. I mean, he only has one game with double digits. Or, sorry, one game with over five targets. Um, you know, so let's let's feature him a little bit. That'd be nice to see. Uh, maybe that happens this week. But you also have the the X factor of how much they're going to use Chase Claypool and how many targets he gets. And so, you know, Justin Fields is just not throwing the ball enough to say that you're going to get this type of slam dunk production. So five for 70. Can you do that? I think that's realistic. Can he I get? Think he did that last that? week. Uh, yeah, but it's been every other week, and it hasn't been consistent. So it's just hard to say he's uh, he's a must start guy. Okay. And sit Cole Komet. Dolphins DST is a borderline top twelve option. Minnesota's at Washington. Anyway, we got two games left. We can do this in eight minutes. Kirk Cousins revenge game. Taylor Heineke revenge game. Kevin O'Connor revenge. A lot of revenge games here. Uh, Minnesota, third fewest offensive plays of 20 plus yards, fifth fewest rush plays of 20 plus yards, second fewest pass plays of 20 plus yards. Only the Giants have a less explosive passing offense than the Minnesota Vikings. It's pretty crazy here. Uh, so Kirk Cousins, though, is still in your top 10. Would you start Cousins or Tom Brady? Cousins. Cousins. All right. Start Cousins. I would start him over Herbert. You guys would not, right? Um, I can I'm, see. I'm close. I'm close. Yeah, I can see why you would do that. I wouldn't, but I can see it. All right, start Dalvin Cook, start Justin Jefferson. Adam Thielen is in your top 24. He's actually 25th for Jamie in PPR. 
he's been pretty matchup dependent this year. His better games have come against teams that struggle against wide receivers. I guess it's not a shock. Washington struggles against them. So, um, especially outside receivers, let's compare Thielen to some of the running backs we've talked about, like Montgomery or Antonio Gibson. I think we already did that earlier, but Deion Jackson, Kenyon Drake, the, the, the running backs that uh, you didn't think would be starters for you, but they've emerged in that uh, group this week. Would you like them better than Thielen or worse? Than PPR worse. Than who? I'm sorry. Than Thielen. Adam Thielen. No, which running back? Yeah. All right. Let's start with Gibson, Drake, and Deion Jackson. The only one I would take is Gibson. Okay. He's catching as many passes as Thielen. Starter sit TJ Hawkinson. I would avoid him if you can. Low end starter. Washington actually allows the fewest fantasy points to tight ends. Only and one already played him. Yeah, they held him to three catches for 26 yards. Uh, Taylor Heineke over Stafford, over Carr. Yes. Yeah, not a terrible option. Did you see the way Heath Azerstad did this one? No. He said he's, uh, I believe, top 10 in uh, points per game. Oh, excuse me, that was an Azer Azerstad of that one. He was seventh in points per game. Oh, maybe Heath did earlier. Maybe that's why he knew it so easily on Fantasy Jeopardy. Yeah. He's QB7 he, right now. He told me that all of your categories were stats that he already researched this week. <laughs> it just happened to line up that way for him. He said that's the only reason why he creamed me as bad as he did. It was, he was on fire. Yeah? Well, you guys shared a brain on Fantasy Jeopardy. Well, I, he said he said that he won, and I said, who usually wins? And, and he, he goes, oh, I do. I don't even know. I usually try to game it so that he loses somehow at the end, but Dave wouldn't let me. I was going to triple no. points at the end. He he completely he obliterated me. Yeah, even I tip my cap to him. He gets he gets very upset on name that player when I do college stuff because it's the only way that Pete Prisco he mentioned that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like anytime I bring up the college stuff, you just see Heath go. Oh. Yeah, you you I, he thinks that I think he thinks that you're gaming it for Pete. So. Well, I mean, if that is the case, then it's a very terrible job that both of us are doing because in the overall scores, it's 55, 11 to five. Yeah, but he's starting to get more more stats for Pete, he thinks. It's more what? More stats for Pete, like the college stuff. and, and Well, like I, I mean, I, I skew away from fantasy numbers because Pete would never have a chance. Right. And so I try to usually do like one non-football related thing, one, one non-football or college related thing. So like, you know, they did this as a kid or they did this off the field or right. blah, blah, blah. And then, or I do like a college thing. So like Pete, the one that he got easily this week was Jacoby Myers, who I said uh, started his college career as a quarterback and eventually went on to break Torrey Holt's single season record for receptions. So Pete knew right away who that was, wow, that cool. it was Jacoby Myers. Um, By the but, way, we're talking about name that player on HQ on the Wednesday episode of Fantasy Football Today on HQ. Yes. It is must see stuff. It is extremely entertaining. The the best thing that happens on that segment, which we don't see, I'm the only one that sees it, is when they stare at the clues and they get stumped because the looks on both their faces <laughs> identical as Pete's face and Heath's face with a 20 year age gap between them, 15 year age gap between them, <laughs> and just how they stare. They they look they somehow morph into twins. <laughs> like it's just very funny. <laughs> All right, before I get back to this game, Jamie, can you name the movie? Uh, there are two football movies that have a Billy Bob. Can you name them? Friday Night Lights and Varsity Blues. Hey, you got it. Wait and up. Keith asked us this on Wednesday, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's your, uh, your favorite Washington running back is clearly Antonio Gibson. I guess you're sitting Brian Robinson. Correct. We, we are ranking Gibson as if McKissick is not going to play. If McKissick does play, where would you rank Gibson? Right where he is right now. I actually am ranked with McKissick playing. Oh, okay. Sorry. So you guys have him in your top 24. Dave has him, I think, 21st. I believe he has at he's least good. nine PPR points if you don't count his touchdowns in the two games that he's played with Heineke. Um, it's so funny Minnesota's that the best thing that they did for him was benching him, essentially. <laughs> Minnesota's been a great run defense, though. It's, they're giving up 3.8 yards per carry to running backs. That's really impressive. And uh, I don't really know how they're doing it. They may not have Dalvin Tomlinson. I don't think they're going to have Dalvin Tomlinson this week. I don't know how big of a loss that is. 
McLaurin is top 16 in both formats. Start Terry McLaurin. Starter sit Curtis Samuel. By the way, just 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 so uh, for accuracy, uh, I said Gibson has as many catches as Thielen. They have as many catches as the same last two weeks. Okay. Uh, Terry McLaurin okay. starts. Start Curtis Samuel. I don't want to start Curtis Samuel. I think he's a number three receiver in PPR. He hasn't scored a touchdown since week two. You know, so non and half PPR, you're 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 begging at this point for him to get some carries, which has saved him. So, you know, 12 PPR points. Can you get that? Yes. You know, he's kind of been consistent in that range, but it just it just feels like you know you're 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 hoping at this point as opposed to counting on it. Twelve targets in two games with Taylor Heineke. Eight catches, 103 yards, zippo touchdowns. But he has, but he has like, yeah, I know he has five carry game there. Yeah, it's a five and a four. He has nine carries for 55 yards in the last two games. Mm -hmm. Saving him for sure. Yes. And sit Logan Thomas, uh, even though it is a good matchup. He didn't have a target last week. Minnesota's DST is 14th for Jamie, 8th for Dave, 13th for Heath. They've been good two games in a row. Washington allows the fifth most fantasy points to DSTs. A lot of that, of course, was Carson Wentz. Last game is Baltimore at New Orleans. You guys have no hesitation starting... Lamar Jackson, right? Uh, even with if even if Andrews doesn't play, even if, if Andrews, Andrews doesn't play, I think that Matthew Stafford would be better. Oh, look at you! <laughs> would Justin Fields be better? Um, I would say there's probably similar similar ceiling for Fields and floor for Jackson. So I would probably still go with Jackson. Hmm. Okay. Art Camara, Olave. I was going to talk about Olave, but I don't, I don't know that we really have time, but I just want to point out that in three starts, three of the four games that Andy Dalton has started with Olave playing, he has seven targets or fewer, six or seven targets. Because Dalton one of those games he left. Not he came back though. He actually left. No, two. he left with a concussion. Oh yeah, but that, but oh, he left the London game and he came back. Yes, he did leave with a concussion in one of them. But Dalton doesn't throw. Dalton's thrown 28, 24, 47 in that Arizona game and thirty passes. Something to think about maybe rest of season. Um, Taysom Hill or Tyler Higby, Kyle Pitts, that group. I'm done with Taysom Hill for the most part. I'm not in non-PPR. I still think he can get you seven or eight non-PPR fantasy points. Done with Juwan Johnson, right? Yes. yes. Ben John. Ben done. Johnson right. did his job. Took Dalton, or, <laughs> Dalton or Heineke? Uh, I like Heineke better. I have Dalton quarterback, Come on. I have Dalton, Dalton higher as of now. Dalton or uh, Carr? Dalton. Andy. All right, let's talk about Kenyon Drake, Devin Duvernay, and Isaiah Likely. Dave, Kenyon Drake. Number two fantasy running back as long as Gus is out. He's put up some good numbers lately, and I think he's going to have the opportunity – to keep it up. I think it's actually better for him also if there's no Mark Andrews. Okay, Jamie, Devin Duvernay. And by the way, there have been three games this year that Bateman either hasn't played or he left early, he left after 17% of the snaps. Duvernay only has one more target than Demarcus Robinson, yet he's rostered in 68% more leagues than Demarcus Robinson. Um, anyway, what do you think about these guys? I think Duvernay is a number three receiver that you're kind of, you know, hoping that he scores a touchdown, you know, and, and last week it was fluky because he ran for one, but clearly he's the more talented of, of the, the guys that are remaining. And the hope would be is that talent wins out. But as we know with this offense, that isn't necessarily always the case because Lamar is such a wild card in how he uses these guys and Greg Roman the same way. So I think, right, like I said, Robinson in deeper leagues is worth a flyer just to see if that target volume that he got last week is somewhat sustainable. Now you're factoring in Deshaun Jackson playing. We don't know the health status of Mark Andrews, if he's going to be out there, is he less than 100%. And as we saw last week, he tried to play through the ankle injury and suffered the shoulder injury and left the game. You know, So it's not a guarantee he even finishes the game. So I, I think Dave sort of alluded to this before. I know we talked about it on Tuesday. If I'm Baltimore, I'm playing Isaiah Likely a hell of a lot more because he can play as a slot receiver. He could play as a you know split outside end. He doesn't necessarily have to play a traditional role. So even if Andrews is there, I think their best bet is to play him alongside in tandem with with Andrews. Now that may come with the detriment to Andrews to whatever extent, but if I'm Baltimore, I don't care. You know, I need to get my best playmakers on the field and he's one of their best playmakers. So in terms of receivers, I think Duvernay is a dart throw number three receiver. Um, Robinson's just somebody that you want to speculate on a deep performance. Can I give a quick stat on Demarcus Robinson? 
I'll allow it. Four times in his career, he's had back-to-back games with at least five targets. He's coming off of one of those times in his last two games. Actually, that's not even true. It's three times. He had five targets in week six. He didn't even have a target in week seven. He played 15 snaps, eight targets last week. But did Bateman play in that game? I think Bateman played in week seven, right? He did play in week seven. Didn't he play in week eight also? Or did he miss? No, he left after 17% of the snaps. Okay, so he did play and then he just left. Look, I just, I, I don't mind stashing Robinson in the deepest of leagues, but his track record suggests no good consistency. Are you, so you think likely is in play even if Andrews does play? I don't know. That's just what I would do. You know, I mean, I I think you're just looking at it. They just lost Bateman. They're still trying to figure out how to replace Marquise Brown. Duvernay is not necessarily the most consistent guy. They're, they're begging for 35-year-old Deshaun Jackson to make plays for them. You know, so if you're going to be the playoff contender that you are, because they clearly told you that with the moves that they made defensively to go get Roquan Smith, you know, they're all in. Their running back situation is a mess. You know, the top two guys are banged up right now, assuming Gus Edwards doesn't play. So why would you not play this young athletic playmaker despite the fact that he plays the same position as your best playmaker? You can find ways to get them both involved, I would hope. So I think if I'm looking at it, and I've done this in a couple of leagues, and I said this in the waiver wire column, you don't necessarily have to pick up Isaiah Likely and then drop him if Mark Andrews plays. See what happens because they're going into their bye week. If he has a good game, then you're holding him, and we'll see what develops after that. So... um, Will likely have a significant role of Andrews plays. I couldn't tell you, but I would I would like to see that happen. I would likely like to see that happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there well, it is. I can't I can't end this show without mentioning that the Saints have allowed the third fewest fantasy points to tight ends. Um, that does so, not matter when it comes to Andrews. Well, it might course. matter when it comes to likely, but again, it depends on who you're comparing to. And who else have they played? Have they shut down some comparable tight ends? Zach Kyle Hurts. Pitts, Hayden Hurst, Zach Ertz. Now, okay. all three of That's those yeah. guys had a wide receiver teammate who did very well. You know, that probably won't be the case with Likely. So uh, where would you rank Likely in the event that Mark Andrews does not play? He would be around number six. So ahead of Pitts, ahead of Tunyon, uh, ahead of Ingram, ahead of Higby, behind Ertz, behind Goddard, obviously, behind Kelsey. Everett? What about Gerald Everett? Behind Everett. I yes. think I have him in the exact same spot. Okay. Or I would have him. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. We'll see you on HQ. We'll see you right here on YouTube.com slash fantasy football today. And yeah. We're doing a mailbag today? We're doing a mailbag today. I get to tell you all why Dan Schneier is a bad friend. That'll be fun. Oh, boy. See you later, everybody. <laughs>